you know, a lot of times, you know, we do not, you know, want to fight. We don't want to go up against the odds. And a lot of times, you know, you just have to just fight your way through it. And a lot of times fighting is fundamental to, to any type of a, the growth cycle as you're going from A to B. And uh, our next speaker, Mr. Harold Stiff, one of the most powerful men who I know, I've shown his pictures to a lot of people around town, his current pictures, and a lot of people think that he's in his late 50s, and I'm not going to tell his age, but I think that he can still knock you out. <laughs> Mr. Stiff, please. Good evening. I'm happy to be here with you, and I would like to start off here, and I only have a few minutes. I noticed Reverend Haywood, they let him go a long time. I wish they'd give me that much time. I need that and more. But uh, I'm going to summarize most of the things we're going to talk about. I am a black man. I am a man who is interested in our youth. And I've been dealing, I came to Fort Wayne in 1950, and I've been here and I've been a resident ever since. Uh, I was a little boy down in Virginia, about 16 miles below Richmond, Virginia, and my parents moved me, moved the family to Englewood, New Jersey in 1932. We lived there until 1937. That is when we moved to Manhattan, New York, and I was there ever since until um, I went into the service, and then I, we, I got, got into, well, I was into professional boxing at that time, but uh, I went into this, I went to school, went into the service, and I was born to a poor family who, in which I uh, appreciate very much because we was poor in everything except love and togetherness and unity. We had that, but they gave us enough of food, sh shelter, and education to get out on our own. And we made, the, most of us, there was five in the family, and we made the best of that. But anyway, what, I, what I'm interested in Fort Wayne and any place in this, that on, the, on planet Earth, I'm interested in the young people uh, because a lot, they come from homes and a lot of times the homes are not motivated and they go astray. And so when I came from New York here, uh, I joined the police department with the, with the PAL club and we were stationed in a number of places, and I've been working with the young boys ever since then, and we have had a lot of fun. We, a lot of boys, have done well, and the thing that, that interests me is this, is how you can get kids, the youngsters, interested in lifestyle through, athlete, through athletic programs. And so what, this, is, this is what we do. And those pictures you see down there, just some of the things that I have. In my professional days, I'm gonna just make this short. In my professional days, I had 119 professional fights. I won 103 professional fights. And um, I was number four contender for the title. And I, 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 when I got to be that good, I've been in Madison Square Garden, I've been halfway around the world fighting. Uh, all in Australia, all in the South Pacific, Hawaii, South America. But the thing about it is this. I got to where I got better than what I, I, I didn't know at that time exactly how good I was. The people was telling me, but I couldn't see it. All I could see was the next stepping stone, which was another fight in the ring. But the thing about it is this. I wanted to, to what I wanted to do in, in the, Sports is that I want to teach the boys uh, how to how to live, how to grow up and get a good education because they need it. They should have dress codes. They should have all these different things. And not only that, learn how to be motivated and learn how to be good fathers, good husbands, good citizens. And these are the things that I'm interested in because if we're going to move ahead, we're going to have to deal with political parties, whoever's in that White House. We're going to have to deal with them. And then after that, I, in 1950, I moved to Fort Wayne. And uh, first I came here on a two-week vacation. And I couldn't fight anymore because I got my hand cut on a kitchen sink faucet. And they wanted me to amputate my thumb, and my parents said no. And I sat down and cried like a baby at the age of 20. 
So there was nothing to do, so I had to find out something else. So I went back to school and studied electronics. So I moved. So I came to Fort Wayne. When I got to Fort Wayne, I met a couple of couple of older men. They were in their 70s. One was black and the other one was white. And, you know, they call you boy and they call them, well, look, boy, if you, if you can do all these things and do all these freehand drawings and all the different things that it takes to get on, you should stay here in Fort Wayne. So I decided to stay in Fort Wayne. Wife cried. She wanted to go back to New York City. She is a native of Fort Wayne. But I would like to say to, to the people in Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne is a good place. You don't have to run any place. And I stayed here because of the opportunity. Fort Wayne is as good as any other place, but you've got to do things on your own. You have got to be a person that goes out and look for success. You make things happen. Things just don't happen. The only thing that happens to, to you, if it's going to happen at all, is something that you don't like. So if, when you make things happen for you, you are making things happen that you like. If you go out and get a job, go out and get a job that, uh, in, in whatever field that you like or trade that you like to do and have fun at doing. It's just like playing basketball or football or any other sport. The more you win, the easier it is and the more better condition that you're in and you will do a better job at it, but you like it. But if you go out and do something that you don't like, it's going to be a burden on the job, home, and then your whole, whole life is tied up. So I am here in Fort Wayne, and I'm enjoying it. I, I'm 84 years old. I went to, I, I, I started a business. I started a plumbing, plumbing and heating and air conditioning business that I've been in for 39 years. I'm the first black man in the state of Indiana to have a master's plumbing license. Uh, the first black man to belong to the local in the state of Indiana. I had, you know, look, I had to fight the odds. I have to, to have my go and, and, in, and um, retain an attorney to take the city to court. And they told me at the time, Levin Moff was, was, was the mayor. They told me that we can talk about this thing. But all they was doing is talking. So I took, so I went, I got the lawyer. He wrote him a letter. And the Board of Health and, and, and the, the billing department, they all, we had a meeting. And I was the only one who act up. Everybody else was acting nice and intelligent or whatever. Uh, but they had made me angry, angry because they told me that you will never get a license here in Fort Wayne. This is what they told me. And I told, and I could see into it that this is the thing that I can make money in. That if I make, make money, I could also help people. And this I have done down through the years. So anyway, we had a meeting, had a big powwow. That's when John Knuckles was alive. And you know, John was a fiery little guy. And we worked it out, we worked it out, and right today I have one of the highest grades that was ever scored down there. Now I'm going into the union, I went into the union, and what I'm trying to tell you is this, and when I said Fort Wayne is a nice place to, 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 be, to be in, if you show that you are interested and you don't take no for an answer, the people will give in. And I'm one of the fellas that I will push you I will push you anywhere I can push you, and I am always right until you find until you find me wrong. And when you find me wrong, I'm so willing to stick my hand out and shake your hand and apologize because why? I've learned something. <laughs>